What's your greatest sporting achievement? I don't know. I beat my brother at FIFA once. Wayne Gretzky is a veritable sporting legend who holds more hockey records than some entire fucking teams. And you have to say the word fucking there to stop copper. So, so there's some top tier YouTube strats for people out there. I love that. <laughs> I love that like, when copper came in. It's like, oh no, you're going to get a £42,000 fine. Yeah. So I went and like, you know, did research, which is my job, and just read it and went, oh, in the entirety of the time this has ever been a thing, they have never fined an individual ever. So this is all bullshit. Yeah, yeah. Also, some YouTube and pro strats. You're not going to get slapped with a 42 grand fine, don't worry. While Gretzky didn't necessarily have the build of a hockey player, he did have one advantage in the form of nearly superhuman stamina and endurance. So Adam, I think it's fair to say that of all the people on the channel, you are the sports fan, yes? Yes, I think so. And you are a big fan of one Mr. Wayne Gretzky, correct? Yep. So you'd like to throw out some statistics about his career for the people at home, just to highlight just how utterly dominant Gretzky was during his run in the NHL. I think the one that stands out for me is the fact that if you look at the current arguably best player in the world, Sidney Crosby, mm -hmm. he's had a 12-year career, something like a 13-year career, and he's got 1,200 points, give or take. Okay. And Gretzky's got double that. I think the statistic I like the most, just because it's the most stupid, is that uh, Wayne Gretzky and his brother hold a NHL record for most average hockey points scored by a set of brothers. <laughs> and that is when you take the average of Wayne Gretzky's like 2,000 and something points and his brother's four. Four. <laughs> he's got four <laughs> points. Even though I like Wayne Gretzky, I had no idea he had a brother. I don't think anyone does think it matters, but he holds a record. <laughs> with it, with his, his four points helps them get that record. Like, I think that more than anything just highlights how ridiculous his like, you know, achievement was. And what makes that achievement doubly impressive is that, as I mentioned in the introduction, Gretzky did not have the build of a hockey player. And I believe at his competitive peak, he weighed around 170 pounds and stood a hair over six feet tall. Yeah. Which sounds like a reasonably built dude, but then you have to consider the average height and weight of a hockey player at the time was about 20 pounds heavier and two to three inches taller. And those three inches and 20 pounds make a hell of a lot of difference when they're flying towards you at like Mach 3 on the ice. <laughs> and they're not gonna stop. They're not gonna stop, no, nothing stops them. No. Except for your body. Which is presumably why most hockey players end up looking like fridges. Yeah. Like, like Gretzky was a notable exception to this. And there's an idea of how slender his frame was and how much of a disadvantage it was considered to be in hockey. When Wayne Gretzky first like, you know, started his professional career, uh, critics of the sport wrote him off because he didn't have the build of a hockey player and said he was too wiry to play in the NHL and that he wouldn't be anything special. And Adam, with the gift of hindsight, what do you think of that statement? <laughs> I think at this moment in time that people have written him off, feel pretty fucking stupid right now. <laughs> that season, Gretzky began rewriting the record books, becoming the youngest player to score 50 goals and capturing his first of eight consecutive heart trophies. And this reminds me a bit of when Leicester City won the Premier League a few years back, and we just like to explain that story for the folks at home as the resident sporting expert. So in the Premier League, there's like four teams who you could arguably say one of these four will win the Premier League every single season. Pretty much, yeah. And Leicester City were given odds of 5,000 to 1 to win the league. They were supposed to go down. And we should point out that 5,000 to 1, I think, is the longest odds a sporting team has ever been given. Yeah. <laughs> like, by bookies, ever. And then they won. Yeah. And so many people made a fortune, just like, Fans of the city, it's like, oh, put quid on. Yeah, Why exactly. not? Just chuck a quid on and they all won five grand. Yeah. But the reason it reminds me of those people writing off Gretzky is because there was a great story that came out. Well, there was a guy who put a 50p bet on for Leicester City to win the league and that would have paid out two and a half grand. But when they lost that first game, he cashed out for 25 pence. <laughs> <laughs> One of my favourite things about that Leicester story is watching that like, American like, sports commentators talk about it. Yeah. Because they can't pronounce any of the words. <laughs> it's like, I mean, here we have like L Leicester City winning the Premier League. It's like, you just reminded me, I watched a video literally before it came out where it was like wrestling botches. Oh man. And then yes. this guy, like in AW, was announcing someone who's from Norfolk and he went, It's from Near Fook. <laughs> So £170 is pretty much the smallest player on the ice. Pretty much, yeah. And as if that wasn't bad enough for Gretzky, he was also the weakest. And that's not us just being mean about Gretzky because it is a standard practice in um, a lot of team sports, at least at the professional level, to have strength and endurance tests for their athletes so they can rank them in terms of like how physically capable they are. And Gretzky would come dead last in those tests 
almost every single time he took one. Strength, you can kind of understand, because he was physically smaller than everyone else on the ice, but he also used to come out dead last in speed. Like, and even vision, which is the one that cracks me up, because there was like a long running, just like half joke, like half serious, like theory about Gretzky that he just had like psychic powers <laughs> because he seems to just know where the puck was at all times and his like just ability to predict the movement of his opponents made it seem like he had, and I quote, eyes in the back of his head. Yeah. And he came dead last in visual acuity tests. <laughs> it's so, it's baffling, isn't it? Yeah, it's because I see stuff like when I watch highlights where the puck could literally be going at 40 mile an hour in the air and someone will just literally stick, put the stick up and just control it. And, and I'm like, it. how? And that's how like elite these players are. And then Gretzky was like the elite of the elite. Yeah. And like just the fact he was so bad reminds me of that famous pitch that went around of like Tom Brady. <laughs> uh, you, the pitch will be right behind. It's like, I forget the exact context of it was. It's when he was like the last possible pick for the draft. And he just looks like someone's dad. Yeah. Just stood with his shirt off and a pair of shorts on like this. And then he just like, uh, the smash cuts him with like five Super Bowls or some shit. It's like, holy balls. It just reminds me of Freezer, like when he actually just tries and then oh, becomes yeah. like golden Freezer. Like Freezer is just naturally talented and it reveals in that movie, oh yeah, I never trained a day in my life. I'm just this <laughs> strong already. So you're so saying Tom Brady is actually just Freezer. <laughs> yeah. and, went, and instead of turning gold, he got the Super Bowl rings by just actually trying. Yeah. So I hope you were paying attention person editing this one because that's your Photoshop challenge for today's video. Tom Brady, over that shoulder, just stood, like, you know, for his draft photo, all like this, when base freezes armour. Uh, you know what, fuck it, also in the bubble car, we <laughs> doesn't have to try. And then over this shoulder, we have golden Tom Brady, just wearing all of his Super Bowl rings. <laughs> I love my job, because I can just say that and it appears. It makes <laughs> yeah. it like I've got a superpower, because I'll say something and it appears over one of my shoulders. Isn't that cool? So I like, cool. when I watch these videos back to make sure there's no mistakes or anything, or make sure there's no mistakes I actually give a shit about. <laughs> just when I say words and just an image flies over my shoulder. Like if I say the words, I don't know, capybara, it's like, meow, just flies in. It's really cool. <laughs> Second capybara. Third capybara. Adam's What's channel logo? Adam's channel logo. <laughs> any other, do, you want anything, do you want anything to bring up on the screen, Nisha? You might end up editing this one. Cute cats. Cute cats. <laughs> Riding a capybara. <laughs> I'll stop now. Bringing it back to Gretzky then. Yes, the great one. The great one. He came last then in pretty much every every challenge. Yeah, every test like um, the NHL used to measure a player's physical capabilities, Gretzky basically failed them all, <laughs> except for one, the one used to measure recuperation time and stamina, uh, which the story goes, Wayne Gretzky was so good at that when the technician got his results back, he assumed it was a mistake because the results were so high that they assume, well, clearly these can't be correct. <laughs> no human is this good. The machine must be broken. And just think about that for a moment. Like this is a sport, an elite level sport where some people in it can presumably bench 300 pounds and run for like 900 miles at like you know, the speed of like five cougars at once. <laughs> <laughs> and they saw results with this tiny little Gretzky, well, they're not right. The machine is broken, no human is this good. And they double checked and went, oh, I guess Gretzky is. And this just makes me think that Wayne Gretzky is one of those people who puts all of his stats in a video game just into evasion. But it doesn't matter that I can't hit very hard, that I'm not very fast, because you can't fucking touch me. It's like in Pokemon where you go, I'm just going to use Toxic, Sand Attack, and Double Team, and there's nothing you can fucking do about the it. The most angry I've ever got in Pokemon was someone who used Minimize and then Sand Attack, and I was like, how the fuck do I hit this guy? <laughs> That's what I've got in Gretzky. <laughs> it's basically what he was doing on the ice. So I think it was a great story for someone who played alongside him where like, People, like, they always tried to hit Gretzky because like, he's, he's the best player on the team. They yeah. want, like, you want to nobble the best player on the team, but they couldn't hit him. And Gretzky, he wasn't a very like, you know, vengeful person. So rather than like, you know, try and get his own back, like, you know, physically, he'd just go score five goals. But oh man, just think for a moment about how ridiculous this makes Wayne Gretzky sound that he took a test and the results were literally off the charts to the point where they assumed it was a mistake and that the machine was broken. And it turns out it wasn't broken. Gretzky was just that good. So Adam, you are a big sporting fan, correct? Yes. Right, and NHL, like, where does that fall in like, you know, the list of sports that you follow? I'm guessing... Top three. Top three. So what are the top three for you then? Formula One, football, NHL, ice so, hockey. Formula One comes before football for you? At the minute. At the minute. I'm, I'm right on it. 
Well, I say I'm named after a fucking Formula One player. I'm pissed off about that. <laughs> I don't like Formula One. Bollocks. Everyone just pausing the video now to try and work out. <laughs> which one, yeah. They won't realise which one it is, but that pisses me off. I don't even like fucking Formula One. Just going on Google. Formula One, small <laughs> <laughs> They'll never find it, it's fine. So I just remember the story my dad told me, I think he went to one once for like a birthday or something. Yeah, it was great, but... Like I sat there for like four hours and it was just like, I got sunburned and then every five minutes you see, no, and that was it. <laughs> sat, that's all you see, because you just sit there and the entire race course is just obscured by fences and stuff. The final day of testing and a final chance for teams to fine tune their 2020 challenges. Yeah, because that's like one thing that I always look at whenever I go, I, I, seat is the priority. I want to be able to see them come down and go round so they're in your vision. Because I know people sit on the pit lane, that's what happens. It's just, boom! And that's it, that's all you see all game. It's like horse racing. Yeah. The people who go stand next to the track, and it's like a horse runs past, and that's it. <laughs> Done. Right, Done. Next. That's great, I can't wait. It's fucking awesome. Like, at least when you go to the dogs, you get to see a dog. Yeah. That's pretty good. So I, I do like the dogs when you get to go there, and you get to bet on just like the dog with a stupid name. Have you ever seen the video of the dog that um, it ended up like falling over because the rabbit failed? So you know the rabbit that goes around the track? Yes. The rabbit failed and all the other dogs carried on running like, you know, didn't <laughs> notice, but one dog noticed. So he like looked at the rabbit and then saw all the other dogs were running off. So he just cut across the grass. So there's one <laughs> bit when the camera- I think I've seen that, yeah. The camera's like filming the dogs running around and then you just see this dog on the grass and it hits a little verge and lands in a little puddle. Oh no! <laughs> uh, six lost its place, Sleepy Maggie, and five's run across the infield here. I'm not the biggest sporting fan, but I've been to like a couple of sporting events. I've seen a few hockey games. Yeah. I've never seen a football match. That doesn't interest me. I don't want to queue up for ages and then pay 10 quid for a pie. The first time I ever watched a hockey game, because I was like a five that I get in, I get a giant pint like this big and I'm sat down. Within three minutes, it was a fist fight. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. And there was blood on the ice. I'm like, what the fuck's going on here? Like, that guy getting sent off? No, he gets five minutes. Yeah. What? Just you, a small penalty. You just broke a guy's nose. Yeah, that's, that happens all the time. What about the blood on the ice? Oh, don't worry, bring a Zamboni in. <laughs> just cleans it. They have a, it. a blood cleaning Zamboni. It's like, holy shit, this sport is amazing. I think there's one player at the minute who stands out to me, and it's called Conor McDavid. He's only like 21. Okay. And talk about speed is insane. But ironically, he plays for the Oilers, which Gretzky did, and everyone's touting him as like the next Gretzky. And he used to play on a line with Milan Lucic, who was like an enforcer. And any, anyone breathes on McDavid. And Lucic just skates over, just gloves off and just starts swinging. I love that idea in hockey because, again, while I'm not like the biggest sports fan, I do like some sports games. Like the NHL games especially because they have like inbuilt fighting mechanics. Yeah. And one of my favourite things to do when I play with a mate of mine who's super into it is start a fight and then just skate away. <laughs> so, like, so his player comes up and just squares up like this and my player just goes, nope, and skates away. <laughs> He just like chasing with his gloves off. I was like, nope, no fighting today. Yeah, Non-violent yeah. resistance is key. I used to do that, just like challenge him to a fight. Like, yeah, my mate be sat next to me. He's like, all right, then yeah, yeah, come on then. And then like, as soon as I like, drop the gloves, I just turtle, which is where you just drop to the ice and just protect yourself. <laughs> and they're like, fight me though, fight me. <laughs> I think what I did, because like, I play a lot of fighting games, went, oh, there's a counter button, yeah. which in most things is usually the most broken shit ever if they don't balance it. So, so I, every time my opponent threw a punch, just counter it, just knock it the fuck out. It's like uh, in the UFC games, oh, where yeah. I play those games, but I only pick the people who are good at counters and then just stand there completely stock still and let them throw a punch first <laughs> and only go for counter punches. 